everybody! We are still in Levensworth and we are going to go on a horse-drawn sleigh ride! Yay! How fun is that? <laughs> it is cold and it is snowing, but it's going to be great. And we have Emma's grandparents with us. That's my dad. That's my mom. And uh, they're going to enjoy the, the funness too. So we hope you guys enjoy it. All right. So you can see the snow. Here's some horse. There's one horse with a nice little sleigh right here. And we have a cluster over here. So we're going to find out. And this is the Ice Icicle Outfitters Guide Company Sleigh Rides. So this is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm sure Emma's going to like it. Here's some of our, our little horse friends. Our horsepower. So this is, uh, I believe this is one horsepower sleigh. <laughs> and there's some over there too. So, uh, oh, what fun. Yeah. All right. So we're just... Uh, Right now, we're gonna just wait for our driver and uh, see what we can do. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? My name's David. I'll be your driver. We got Gray up here, my co-driver. So if there's any problems, Gray be taking over. <laughs> okay. I was gonna thought he was gonna say it's his fault. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Hey, we got Ellie and Midas up front doing the heavy work. Ellie's on the left. Midas is on the right. Ellie's about an 11-year-old Percheron mare. Midas is about a five-year-old. Uh, Overland Bertrand Cross, oh, okay. So we're riding in today, folks, about 100 years old. This is what we use in the early day to feed the cattle, to haul the hay, pretty much your ranch pickup to do your chores with. Since then, it's been rebuilt a few times, remodified. We put in a few extra seats, so now it's a school bus. <laughs> so where are you folks from? Well, Quincy and Florida. Quincy and Florida. <laughs> Well, good. That's Orlando. a good stretch. Orlando, Florida, back oh, here. Oh, hey. Orlando, you guys are neighbors. You could have rode together. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I know. Oh, I was going to say, we are now. We picked a good day for it. We got snow on the valley floor. We got snow in the air. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. day. Yes, it is. See our guys right there. So just in front of me, folks, off to my right, we have a federally funded coho salmon hatchery. They raise the coho salmon that they release into the icicle river system. We'll be following the icicle down here away. That's about 80 acres of federal land. If you're a taxpaying American citizen, this is your land. And we use it through an organization called the Friends of the Fish through Leavenworth. And any money made here, a percentage of it goes back to the hatchery to enhance the maintenance of this property. Nice. In the summertime, they recreate, picnic, volleyball, walk the dogs, and do whatever. So the pond right there looks like it's completely broken over. So they're rebuilding their sediment ponds here. They like to run the water into a sediment pond before they run it back out to the river here. The old sediment ponds are over there, but they're building these new ponds here. This is going to be a youth fish pond for the kids behind me here. This next pond is a habitat for migrating waterfowl. They got an island out in the middle of it so that they can nest out on the island without the predators getting to them unless they want to swim. That's this one right here that's still working on it. Oh, Anybody ever heard the term, I'll be there with bells on? Uh, right. <laughs> yep. Anybody know what that means and where it comes from, huh? No. Well, I'm glad you asked, folks. Back in the early days, the roads got busy, the teams start running into each other and getting into wrecks. And the teamsters said there's something we need to do to make these roads a little bit safer. So what they did, if you look up the horses, you'll see those silver balls sticking up. Yeah. Those are called the hanes, and the hanes hold the harness onto the collar. And what they did back in the early day to make the roads a little safer, they run a light chain between the balls on the hanes there, and they put a heavy bell up there. You're driving down the lane and you hear that heavy bell coming, you know you had to slow down, swing a corner wider, pay heed to the traffic so there's not a problem. Over the years, that uh, heavy bell on the hanes became the horn on the automobile. Yeah. <laughs> 
if I'm cruising down the lane and I see my fellow teamster stuck in the mud there, I can't just go by and leave him there. I have to pull him out. But if I pull him out, he has to give me one of them bells off his hands. Oh, you you know. show up in town with no bells on your hands and everyone figures you've probably been out stuck in the mud. <laughs> Not the best teamster to call. I better get down to that hardware store. I hope they have some more of them bells. I can get them on these hands before somebody calls me on this deal, right? Meanwhile, you look at the other end of town, you see the big dog coming in. He's got all the bells on. He's on time. He's dependable. He don't get stuck in the mud, and he'll pull his fellow teeth to out. So if you got a load of freight to haul, he'd be the one to call. But when you call him and say, hey, would you haul a load of freight for me? He'll tell you, I'll be there with bells on. <laughs> What do you think, Emma? I had a the guy in the last lane. He said that was the Midas touch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't even see the mountain. You can barely see it over there. Woo! <laughs> There's a little dip there. So here we are on the Icicle River, folks. Look to the far right, you see the dam that controls the water level of the water coming into the hatchery on the back side. Coming up on the right, you see a plaque commemorating the hours of volunteer work the locals put in the make of the disabled fisherman's platform. So if you know anybody in a wheelchair looking for a place to go fishing, there's an opportunity for them. Again, the hatchery releases the coho salmon into the Icicle River system. The Icicle River flows into the Wenatchee, the Wenatchee into the Columbia, the Columbia into the Pacific. So hopefully some of those salmon will be back in a few years to lay some more eggs. This hatchery releases about 2.2 million fingerlings into the system each year, and the return rate is about 10 to 15 percent, which is what they're looking for to maintain that base eggs of 2.2. Right, Emma? Wow. boat launch where they launch their boats in the summertime they want to go fishing or uh, canoeing or rafting or whatever Ooh, giddy up. <laughs>
right, Emma? Woo! Now we're going. Oh my goodness. Got a heavy load on Hey folks, on this ridge behind me, up over that ridge on the other side is what's called the Blewett Range. Gold was discovered in 1860 and the Blewett Mines opened up. Leavenworth wasn't much of a town back then, but it became a town as a supply station for the Blewett Mines. That lasted about 20 years till about 1880 and as the mines started winding down, it looked like slow times for Leavenworth. About 1890, the timber industry took off here in the valley, and with all the loggers moving into the area, it looked like good times for Leavenworth again. And in 1902, Lamb and Davis opened up a sawmill here in Leavenworth, employing about 1,500 people. And with about 1,000 other support people living in town, the town grew to a little over 2,500. Population of Leavenworth today is just a little over 3,000, so it's not much bigger today than it was back in 1902. About 1906, the train tracks came through town, connecting the east coast to the west coast, and Leavenworth became Railroad Central with six tracks running down the main street of town, and where the Enzian Hotel sits is where the roundhouse was, with six lanes running through the roundhouse. Wow. About 1912, the tracks moved north of town about 20 miles. Looks like slow times for Leavenworth again. Just north of Leavenworth is what you call Ski Jump Hill. There's a long wooden ramp and with the Olympic competition coming about every four years and other sporting and skiing events on the hill, life was good in Leavenworth again. And by the late 1940s, early 50s, Ski Jump Hill, the long wooden ramp was old, deteriorated and in need of repair. And Olympic competition rules had changed, so the Olympics no longer came to Leavenworth. So for the third time in Leavenworth, short history looked like ghost town. About 1958, a businessman traveling around the world had been to Bavaria and back, opened up three businesses here in Leavenworth with the Bavarian theme and was quite successful. And by 1962, they had a town meeting convinced the whole town to go Bavarian, and the rest is history. Wow. Now they have a covenant in town. If you have a business in Leavenworth, you have to have a Bavarian front on your building, and you have to have lights commemorating the holidays, starting with Christmas, running through... Uh, from January, uh, see, the day after Thanksgiving to January 1st. After January 1st, they toned the colors down, put the red and white lights out to celebrate Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. And they have an October fest and a summer fest and a winter fest and an icicle fest. <laughs> they have a fest about every six weeks down there. <laughs> a fest of us for the rest of us. <laughs> You heard about old Uncle Leroy, didn't you? Over there at Gig Harbor, little fishing town. Everybody knows everybody. Old, old Uncle Leroy, he's going out fishing every day and filling up his boat. He got a full boat of fish every day. Nobody else catching any fish. They said, Leroy, how you doing? How you catching? No. Leroy, he ain't gonna tell you nothing. He's a fish. So, everybody knows everybody in Gig Harbor. And Leroy, he goes down to his boat one day and the game warden's sitting in his boat. He says, Leroy, I'm going fishing with you today. Okay. So Leroy goes out, and he goes out farther, and he goes out there and way, and he gets way out there to his favorite fishing spot, you know, and he reaches into the bait box, grabs a stick of dynamite, lights her off, throws her in the water, and boom, she goes off, and the fish float to the top, and Leroy starts gathering them up and filling up the boat. Game warden says, Leroy, now this is still, he goes, heck, you know, we can't be doing this. And Leroy reaches into his bait box, lights off a stick of dynamite, <laughs> hands it to the game warden. He says, you're going to stand there and fish? He says, you're going to fish? You're going to stand there and argue. Put <laughs> <laughs> your boot back on, Cinderella. Clear up. You can kind of see the blue skies. And, and if you use a hundred pounds of explosive, it makes a really big bang, and it creates a whole lot of stunned fish. <laughs> Is that what the Koreans do? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I thought. <laughs> well, that's what
There's literally a one horse open sleigh. How nice. Very sweet. And look at that backdrop with that. How beautiful is that? So nice. Well, folks, I want to thank you for coming along. I hope you enjoyed the ride. I'm going to ask you to remain seated until I get the horses secured. Once I get the horses tied up, we go ahead and exit the if you step to this first 10 here, they'll have some warm refreshments for you. What do you think, Miss Emma? What do you think? I thought she was wonderful. Yes. I thought she fell asleep at first. No, huh? well, she's taking it all in. Nope, so I want to hold Mimi's hand, not yet. <laughs> About the... All right, so these were our drivers, our pullers. <laughs> this is Midas. And this was Ellie. And they're very sweet. Hello. We are allowed to pet. Of course, I asked. Yes. This is my favorite part right here. <laughs> Thank you. I have some other sleigh or some other horses. What good girls, guys you are. They just smell so good. I know. Yes. I, I know that sounds weird, folks, but yeah. If you're a horse person, you know the smell and they smell good. Yes, what well, good. Can you guys yes. Can stay back there, please? Sure enough. I'm going to take off. Sure enough. Thank you. All right. Go underneath. Okay. Maybell, Edda. Step up. So here's the empty sleigh. Good girl. Over 100 years old. Now he did say this sleigh is not normally, originally it wasn't a, for pulling like this, it was more of a work sleigh than they pulled like hay and things like that. But then they transformed it and put things on there. Thanks guys. Wonderful ride. Very smooth. Actually, I will say it was much smoother than I thought. Thank you. Yes. Hi Midas. Oh, well that's a face. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching us in our two horse open sleigh. It's beautiful outside, it's snowing, it's everything that a horse drawn sleigh ride should be. Um, very smooth, horses were very nice, Emma did a great job. So I hope you're able to uh, come and do this as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Bye.